Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Brush and I make indie games for a living. Most of you know this, but if you're new, welcome, welcome. We're going to jump inside of Adobe Premiere and also Unity. And I'm going to tell you really quickly my tricks and tips, secrets on how to make a really, really great trailer. It's actually not that hard. Before we do that, guys, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by, wait for it, Full-Time Game Dev. Guys, Full-Time Game Dev is my online program, 30 plus hours of content with, honestly, a ton of great reviews, over 3,000 students worldwide. I'm honestly really humbled and really lucky that so many of you, and I know a lot of you are in the chat. Um, if you're a student, uh, feel free to say hi. Um, so many of you have, have written great reviews and joined the program. And so I just wanna let you guys know really quickly that it's 50% off right now, but only for five students. I don't do this all the time. Um, I, I do it maybe once a month. Um, I'll do like a live stream sort of flash sale. So that's what today is. There's five seats available. Guys, these sell out pretty much every time I do this, these sell out almost immediately during the live stream. So if you wanna use that coupon code below, you can use it. Guys, what you're gonna learn at Full Time Game Dev is you're gonna learn how to be a moron and become a full-time game developer. I'm, I'm pretty moronic myself. You can ask my team. I'm not the smartest game developer, but somehow I was able to raise six figures for my indie titles before I even finished them for both Neversong and Pinstripe and probably for Father, which is my next game. Um, gonna raise money from, from publishers, six figures in fact, before I even finished the game. I did that for Neversong and Pinstripe and also six figures on Kickstarter. Um, this is done before I even finish my games. I'm going to show you guys how you can do that. There's actually a lot of secrets and tips and tricks on how you can do that. And obviously on top of that, guys, you're going to get 2D and 3D art tutorials, plenty of content, 30 plus hours. You're going to learn the secrets of, of um, publishing and securing funding like we talked about. You're going to get a ton of workbooks, but you're also going to learn the basics of C Sharp and Unity. So this is a program that's massive. There's a ton of content and it's 50% off right now for five students. And by the way, I do wanna welcome the new students from our last live stream flash sale, which was a couple weeks ago. Um, Akari, Paul, Nicholas, Alexander, and Renee. Welcome to the program. So if you guys are interested, click below, join the program, and I'll see you on the private Discord server. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started here. By the way, guys, I wanted to let you know that my brand new course, Easy 3D, is totally free right now. Click below to enroll for free, and you'll immediately be taken to the program where you're going to learn how to make your very first 3D game. And here's the best part. You're going to do it fast. And you really don't need to know anything about Unity or code or 3D modeling. It's really kind of easy, and it's totally free. Click below to make your very first 3D game. I can't wait to see you succeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Adobe Premiere. This is where the trailer all was put together, okay? How many of you saw my trailer for Father that dropped? I think it was Friday, or it was Friday. And it's doing really well. Uh, I think it's like at 25,000 views, which is great. We're doing really, really well, getting some traction. The I first want to talk about how what your trailer should accomplish. Your, your trailer should obviously inform the audience of what your game is, okay? That's obviously very important. Honesty is the best recipe when being a salesman, right, or a saleswoman. You want to be honest about what your game is, what it's all about, but you really want to take the best parts of your game, distill it down into this wonderful, beautiful trailer. Now, a lot of you, and I've seen this with my students, a lot of you will create a trailer that's so honest about the game that it's it's almost artsy. It's kind of pure. That's great, and I appreciate the honesty, but you're not going to capture people's attention. So what I highly recommend is take the best parts of your game and make it into something really fun, really exciting, even if you've got a really moody game like I've got here. Okay, so what we've done with Father here is I could show you really quick. We're inside of Adobe Premiere right now. Um, it gets to the point, okay? In the beginning, 
Adam and Eve created the heavens and the earth. I'm picking you up. You're coming home. Dad, I'm fine. Go home. Where are you? Eve. Eve! Okay. So as you can see, we're about 20 seconds in and it's it's going, right? It's exciting. We're, we're throwing some of the most actionable, exciting sequences on screen, and we're throwing text on as well. Now, a lot of people, this is the, the sort of the second point that you wanna do with your game. Obviously, you want it to be exciting and fun, throw in the music, get going fast. Now, for me, because this is a story game, I felt it was really, really important to let people know as quick as I could, but in a meaningful and impactful way, as best as I could, uh, the best I could think of, what this story is all about. So I threw on some like fake, uh, sort of text from the Evian, or it's actually called the Eventide Cult. And we threw on that text and I got a voice actor to voice act these lines. And I actually got that from voices.com. Um, and I think it was probably 150 bucks. It's really cheap, right? Not, not expensive at all. So after about 20 seconds of introducing the story, we go for it, right? Bang, jump in. Where right are you, Eve? Eve! Now, why is this an effective line, okay? This, this line apparently causes a lot of comments, okay? And you might not like this, right? Let's say you drop your trailer and you say, inspired by Hollow Knight. You're gonna get comments that are nasty of people saying, how, do you, how could you say this is inspired by Hollow Knight? It's clearly inspired by Celeste. You're wrong in your inspiration. Or another game that copies Hollow Knight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And they troll you in the comments. This will make you feel bad, but it's actually a good thing because you get people engaged in the comments. So from a purely marketing perspective, letting people know what you're inspired by is actually pretty cool. It's pretty uh, effective. Um, so I would say give that a shot and see what see what happens for your trailer and for your game. Um, the, this, the third reason, I think I gave you two reasons already, but the third reason why this is a great thing to do is because instead of me saying a first person light action horror adventure story game, instead of doing that, I just say it's Half-Life and Resident Evil. That, that's the two things. And people go, well, the music sounds like Doom. Well, I can make my music sound like Doom and still make a Half-Life game. So those are the two games that are really inspiring this game. Look how quick and effective that is. It took three seconds for you to understand exactly what this game is because most people know Half-Life and most people know Resident Evil. And you're also gonna lock in those customers, right? The people who love those games, they're gonna go, hmm, an indie game that's like these games, that's cool. Now obviously you're setting yourself up for failure in a way here because you better make a game that's at least comparable to these two games. Um, but I'm not too worried about that because I think we can do it. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Action, 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 lots of action sequences. Now the question is, Thomas, how do you get all these really sweet panning shots? Um, you've got gameplay, but you've also got these beautiful shots. Like this one, I love this one. We call that, well I won't say the word, but we call that one the Venus, we call it that. Um, that's what the team calls it. So <laughs> But how do, how do we get all these great shots here? Um, let's open up Unity and take a look. Now, we, these are all these different clips, right, from, pulled from Unity. I don't know whether it was my doing. I'm gonna, I, I think I'm gonna take the credit, honestly, because about two years ago, I was on a call with Unity, and they said, what are some things that you want to see added to Unity? Maybe it was three or four, three, three or four years ago. And I said, I wanna be able to record my screen without OBS, without Streamlabs. I wanna be able to do it like that. Right, and I wanna get an animated GIF or a movie file and I want it to be perfect and clean. Well, if you go to the package manager inside of Unity, <laughs> Hector, if you go to Unity here and type in recorder, and I think, wasn't it you, Hector, who told me that this had just dropped? Um, make sure you install the recorder, okay? Once that's installed, you go to Window, General, and go to recorder, go to the recorder window. And this beautiful, beautiful, I mean, this thing is such a lifesaver. This will record your game um, and output the video file and then you can create trailers, okay? So if you wanted to do gameplay, you could hit play here, uh, play around, 
Um, but the cool thing, <laughs> this is actually really cool. The cool thing is, is for me, I don't know if this is the, the case for some of you guys who are using the recorder, but for me, it actually slows the frame rate down significantly so that you're sort of in slow motion, almost like you're playing like Max Payne. <laughs> is it Max Payne? Yeah, it's Max Payne. And you're, you're in slow motion playing the game. But what that allows you to do is first, it allows you to capture some really awesome moments where you're in slow motion, you're shooting things and you're really quick and exciting and fast. And you're getting headshots where you could really do that if it was actually like 30 FPS or 60 FPS or whatever. But the second reason why that's a good thing is it, it causes the performance of the actual outputted file. It jumps it right back to its original frame rate and it's smooth. There's no, there's no drops of frame rate. It's all very clean and very smooth. Once those are exported out, it's really quick. All you click is start recording and then it outputs it to a folder that you specify. Once that's done, you have a bunch of footage inside of Adobe Premiere. So for example, let's take a look here, reveal in project. We have all of this footage and a lot of it's crap. It's just me walking around making mistakes and it's not really exciting. It's like a let's play, but I'm purposeful with each recording I do. I say, I want I want this to be featured at this moment. And so this one right here is pretty cool, yeah. right? That one's pretty cool. So I can actually just set an output with O an out point with O. So this is the in point, this is the out point, and I just drag it in, okay? Now, really quick before we move into Unity and actually prepare this demo, I wanna finalize a few points with this trailer. What I like to do is I choose a track, a song that will dictate everything in the trailer. Trailers are basically like, kind of like music videos almost. Uh, unless you're making, you know, a trailer like what, what, Devil Daggers. Devil, Dav Devil Daggers is a great, awesome first person game. And the trailer is so boring, and but it's it's effective, but it's boring, and it doesn't really follow a song. But most most games are gonna follow the beat of a song. So like, watch this. Like this, every clip here is following a beat of the track. Eve. Yeah. Yeah. It's just following the beat. And then when the music drops. Together they said, let there be darkness. And I was talking to David Whaley, a friend of mine who made a game called First Tree, and he was he was watching the trailer and he said, Thomas, you should really be towards the end of this trailer cutting in content quicker, 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 and almost overwhelm the audience. And then you have a big release. And then the father trailer comes, or the father, uh, whatever you call that, artwork shows up. The only reason I didn't do that, David, is because I ran out of time. <laughs> but that's a great idea. So that's something to consider. Um, and by the way, guys, um, my buddy Santiago did the artwork for this. Um, so many team members worked on this trailer and worked on this game. I'm doing things a little bit differently for my third game. I'm actually working with team members and it's just way better. It's way better. It, things go so much faster and the game looks incredible. So I'm really proud of my team. Um, but if you want to follow Santiago below, click below. Okay, guys. So that's how you make a great trailer. So let's jump inside of Unity and we need to get... The reason I'm kind of scrambling here is because we're trying to get this thing done, this demo done by like Thursday this week and I'm pretty pretty stressed out. So let's close out the trailer. I don't need to save it here. Hopefully that was really, really uh, helpful to you guys. And by the way, those of you who want to know the voice actors for the game, I found all these uh, voice actors and also the trailer. The voice actors were on voices.com, but now I'm sort of friends with them on email. So Dick Terhune is I think how you say his name. A lot of you are probably like, why did you just say Dick? Dick Terhune does the voice acting for the uh, father character and believe it or not guys he voices mr pinstripe in pinstripe he voices um the narrator who's reading the storybook in never song and now he's the father character and his name is roy um and then also uh abigail turner she she's doing the the daughter and she actually voiced um john in never song so all these people sort of keep coming up and and i, I kind of understand now why directors will use the same voice actors and actresses. It's not necessarily about the, oh, this is perfect for your voice. It's more, I just love working with you. Like you're really enjoyable to work with and you you love my projects and I love, um, I love how they interact with the project. So that's why I chose them. 
Um, okay, so we got a lot to do here. And by the way, guys, just a reminder for those of you who just joined us, full-time game dev is 50% off right now for five of you, just five of you. These are going to sell out by the end of the day. They usually always do. So if you're interested in joining full-time game dev, click below. You're going to get 50% off. You're going to learn everything from securing six figures in publishing deals, six figures in Kickstarter deals, C Sharp, Unity, how to make a 2D game, how to make a 3D game, and how to hit the Steam front page. Ton of stuff. 3,000 uh, students worldwide. And by the way, if you're a student, let us know in the chat. Click below to get started. All right. Thanks for uh, listening to these ad reads, guys, for the, my sponsorship today. Uh, otherwise, let's go ahead and take this massive list of things we got to do Whew, to prepare this game for GDC. Um, I, I think I can dis disclose it's going to be at GDC. I don't think I can disclose who I'm with, but um, it's going to be at GDC very, very soon. And so we got a lot to do. So the check marks here are all the things that I've finished up for the demo. Um, but we got a few things that we're working on right now. Uh, the first one is, okay, so what we're working on right now is actually these trigger zones. Let's get an isometric mode. So what these trigger zones are going to do is they're just going to add a little bit of oomph to the game. And what these do is they change out the ambience of the game to be, you know, down here is a forest sound effect. And then up here, it'll fade out the music and it will start playing more coastal sounds. Okay. The reason why is because you actually get to this vista and it's sort of coastal. Okay. So let's hit play here. I'm going to actually put the character right here. The way we're going to do that is we're going to type in controller because that's our character controller. I'm going to press control shift F. It's going to put us at this actual position where our camera is, zero it out, and I should just drop right down. I might get hurt here, but. Craig Hines says, shout out for Dick Terhune, AKA the voice from hell. That's right. He's a really good voice actor. Very, very good. Very kind too. Okay, so let's see here. Ah, yes, let's make our way up to, where am I? Yeah, let's make our way up. Let's see if it changes the sound. Okay, let's hear it. Can you guys hear it okay? Does this actually work? So right now we've got music playing. We've got subtle ambience. But as we make our way up, it should stop the music. Good, okay. So there's a little bit of glitches with the music. I'm not gonna worry about it for the demo. But listen, hear that? And then when we make our way out of the trigger zone, it should take us right back to the music playing. Cool, huh? Here comes the music. Good, great, okay. So our trigger zones are working great for the game. And the way these are handled is there's just a script on here. Um, and that trigger zone, let's see here, there it is. Uh, the way these are handled <clears throat> is there's a looping sound trigger. It can change the reverb presets. It can change the layered music presets. So it can actually cut off the music and stop it. Um, and then it can also throw in a new track um, for the ambience. Okay, so a great example is the sewer system in this level. Um, once that's, uh, once you enter the sewer system, it's gonna start playing like underground, sort of dripping water and stuff. So let's go ahead and add a check mark to the looping sounds, okay? Where was that? Let's see here. I think I already put a check mark next to it. Yeah, there it is, there it is. All right, check mark. It always feels really good to put a check mark next to your, your to-do list when creating a demo. Spider eggs were not, I'm not gonna worry about the spider eggs right now. I think we can talk about it later. I'm glad that Felipe created those. Felipe's the 3D modeler. He created those a couple days ago, but we're not gonna put them into the demo just yet because there's just a lot to do here. Okay, this one's finished, which is spiders that, spiders kept following the player for infinity. And it was really ridiculous because if you drop into the well, and then go explore the sewer, the music would keep playing even though they're like 20 feet behind you. Okay, so this is another one. This is an important one. Make the parkour system much harder for the cliff puzzles. So there's a cliff over here. Let's fly on over to the cliff. Man, this is so beautiful. Felipe's done such a good job. So let's go over to the parkour system. So we have, oh, that's actually the train track. 
So let's fly all the way over to, there it is, to the lighthouse. And we have this parkour system. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm actually gonna drop this down a little. I can't see, why can't I see? There we go. I'm actually gonna cut a little bit more into this ground here because walking on this to get to the parkour system is kind of ridiculous. It's a little hard to do. Um, I, I'm not sure, I, I, actually I'm pretty sure Felipe, this was my fault. So I think I had tweaked it or something. Um, so what we can do here is go to set height. Okay, so let's go to set height. We can hold shift and left click and it finds the exact height, which is 114. You can see it over here. So now all I gotta do is just click. Let's make a brush size pretty small here. And now we can just set the height right here. See, so now we have a lot more room to work with um, for the player to be able to jump. There we go. Yeah, it's nice and there's a nice crease there now. I like that. Now, obviously guys, Unity sucks when it comes to terrain. Look at how stretchy that is. That you don't really have that problem in, in Unreal. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, anyway, so let's set the opacity to pretty high so I can actually just add a little bit of terrain here just to give the player a little bit of room to walk when they get onto these uh, platforms, okay? I'm gonna show you guys in just a second what this looks like. Give me just a sec here, okay? But really quick, what I'm gonna do is actually go to paint texture here and I'm gonna paint a little bit here. I think that uh, we could probably do like some moss right here. Just just really sort of make it look not so stretchy. It's tough though. It's really tough. And obviously there's tools available out there on the asset store where you can avoid this stretching. Um, and also another thing you can do is just smooth it. So you could just do something like this and it's not gonna look so stretchy, okay? But you know, it's not my favorite thing about Unity, but we got a demo to get done. So I'm not worried, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's bring our character controller right here. Again, what we wanna do is select our controller. There we go. And we're gonna press Control Shift F. It's gonna put us right next to the camera, at least the scene camera, not the actual camera. Uh, we're gonna zero out its rotation because we don't want it to be rotated with the camera and then hit play, okay? We're gonna take a look at this parkour system and kind of think through a, a few of the puzzle designs, okay? We have an issue with the sound of this. Let's fix that really quick. There's no sound for walking playing, okay? So let's fix that really quick. The reason why this is happening is I need to specify that the terrain, uh, this terrain layer in particular has a certain sound effect. So what we need to do is we need to first find out what it's called. So let's go to uh, paint texture. It's this rocks earth. I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called rocks earth. That's the terrain name. Then we go to our sound manager. This is a basically a, um, what do you call it? A scriptable object. Is that what it's called? Created by AJ, who's the coder, or at least created the code system. Basically he created source engine um, for the game. And then I'm, I'm going in and destroying it basically. Uh, for the demo. Uh, okay, so what we do is we go to the actual sound groups here. And uh, this isn't anything built in with Unity, by the way. This is all coded by AJ. Uh, what was it called? Grass Dirt? It was called Rocks Earth. Okay, so do we have Rocks Earth? We do. Okay. So for some reason, it's not playing. Isn't that strange? Step dirt. Let's see what the, if the actual sound is, is available. It is. So for some reason it's not playing. Isn't that strange? Let's see here. Oh, maybe it's um. Let's see here. Is it this one? I think it might be that one. Dirt two. Or dirt. No, it's dirt two. So for some reason dirt two isn't playing. Um. So let's take a look. Dirt 2 or Rocks Earth. Let's see, where's Dirt 2? There's Dirt 2. It's a terrain layer. Good. So it's not playing for some reason. How strange. Rocks Earth and Dirt 2. What if we move them up here? I don't know why this matters, but we're going to move them up here and take a look. It could be that there's multiple terrains called Dirt 2. Is it that one or this one? Okay, that one should do it. 
Hmm, let's take a look and hit play one more time. <sighs> Welcome, AJ. How are you, buddy? Why is that spider out there? Oh, we haven't baked the map. Okay, it works for some reason. Not sure why. But let's kill this MFR. Okay, we need to fix the nav mesh, obviously. The nav mesh, for those of you who don't know, is an invisible mesh that's baked based on the actual nav or the terrain here. Okay, so I like the idea of. I don't like how those are. Like, that doesn't really do anything. I think that's fine. Though. That one feels useless. So I'm going to remove that one. You know what? I think I'm going to remove that one so that you have to jump over to this one. Right? Want to try it out, guys? I want this to be a pretty challenging puzzle. I told Felipe, I said, Felipe, the player should die once. Um, that's sort of the way I look at things. I'm like, <laughs> how many times do I want the player to die uh, for this to be you know, a fair puzzle? Okay, you can jump over to that. Good. And you always want it to be pretty uh, pretty obvious what they can jump on. So I'm actually going to move this over to like there. Whip, whip. There we go. Okay, and then this one over. And Felipe, if you're watching, sorry I'm messing with your puzzle design. I wanted it to be a little bit harder, so I wanted to sort of... And also, I'm going to add some turrets, okay? So I kind of want it to be pretty specific on how we're doing this thing okay so we'll force the player to jump over to there but i also want to put a turret system okay so we have a turret right here and this you'll see it and you'll go oh crap i need to get that thing now it's going to be hard because if you don't have any ammo you're going to have to um use your axe that's going to be tough 42 pixels, welcome, welcome. How you doing, buddy? There we go. Yeah, I'll turn down the footsteps. Uh-oh. The musical keeps, oh, okay, it was that guy. I'm wondering why the music keeps playing. Okay, let's take a look at this one over here. I don't want the music to keep playing. Yeah, those footsteps are really loud. Okay, good. The music stops playing. So, it, the turrets aren't too hard as long as you have ammo. There we go. <laughs> So what I'll probably do is put some ammo like right here in a crate. Okay, so that's destroyed. Good. And then we'll put, I like that platform, that's really cool. But I'm gonna remove this one and force the player to jump all the way over there. Oh, that's tough, okay. Um, here's what we'll do though. We'll do this one destroyed. I love, I love the idea of just leaping at this super high height. And then I'm gonna put one here. Just paste it so that you can land. I like the idea of a long, I love this idea, but I wanna make it harder, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna delete this one. Uh, no, this one here. And I'm gonna scale it and force the player to be like, whoa, walking across, okay? So just, there we go. Keep on, keep it on, there we go. All right, by the way, welcome to those of you just joining us. Come on in, come on in. Thanks for hanging out. My name is Thomas Brush. If you don't know me, I make indie games for a living and I've been doing this for a while. Just sitting, being an idiot, making indie games live. That's what I do. And just remember guys, if you want to join my program, full-time game dev, that program is sponsoring today's video. There are probably about three codes left. I haven't checked, but there's probably only about three left. So if you're interested in joining the program, 
click below 30 plus hour program on how to make indie games but the most important part is guys my trip tricks and tips to actually go full-time before you even finish your game um, it's actually possible can't make any promises obviously nobody can I like to be honest about that I think that's important okay let's see how this feels guys you ready Thomas the father trailer was effing amazing thank you Matthew it means a lot to me all right whoops okay let's take a look spider I don't like you Ooh, he was crawling on that wall I wish he could crawl up. Wouldn't that be so cool if they could crawl up the walls? Uh. Okay, here we go. Whoa! Whoa! Ow! I just died. Okay. Good. And by the way, yesterday, guys, I added a landing sound. Do you hear that? It changes everything. It was crazy. Uh, I was like, why does the game not feel heavy? It doesn't feel weighty. And it was because there was no landing sound. Here we go. <laughs> that should kill me. Um, it's just for some reason the loading system is broken, so I'm not dying. <sighs> JM Animations made sure that we know that these hills are stupid stretched. Yes, correct. Okay, okay, let's try again. Here we go. Okay, so that's just completely unfair. Uh, so let's see here. We're gonna bring it closer. So this one, this one, and this one, all we gotta do is bring them closer and we're gonna add a bounce pad system, okay? Let's bring those in. The bounce pad system I'm really excited about. I don't really think I'm gonna have a ladder, although I did tell Felipe I wanted a ladder. Felipe, I'm sorry I changed my mind on you, buddy. And then we're gonna take this, and we're gonna, <laughs> this is gonna be great. We're gonna make the player jump down here and land on a bounce pad. It's gonna be really, really fun. So we have these bounce pad nipples. Let's see here. What, Thomas said what? You heard me. Bounce pad nipples. Okay, that's not it. What about nipple? Nope. Bouncer. There it is. Pimple bouncer variant. I don't know if that's it. Let's take a look here. Nope. Nope. Crap, what were they called? Pimple? I think that might be it. Wow. Okay. We're gonna shrink down the size. Is that gonna is that gonna do it? Let's take a look here. Yeah, I think that's gonna be just fine. We're gonna put that down here and require the player to jump down to it and hit it perfectly and then bounce up. That looks pretty cool. Let's uh, fix the texturing a little bit. Um, that's fine, I think it might be the normal map. Yeah, the normal map, we need to increase the texture size because it's really pixelated. We're also gonna change point no filter to just bilinear. Hit apply, nice and smooth now. And so what the theory is, is jump, boing, jump. That's the theory, okay? Now, if you get stuck down there, you're pretty much screwed. Um, not really, actually. You can just bounce on the bouncer. But I want it to be pretty far down here, okay? And just really force the player to, to make a leap. We'll pull it out just a little bit. I'm going to pull that nipple out just a little bit. Hit save. Hit play. Although, to be honest, this guy's getting annoying. I can, I can kill him really quick. <gasps> oh no! Okay. Um. You know, you can't do age rate per platform. That doesn't work. Matthew, you can't do that. Um, I've thought about it. Like, maybe for Switch, there's no blood, no nipples, that kind of thing. No. ESRB is going to know, okay, you're cheating the system. 
Ouch. Okay, let's... This is getting annoying. And I need to destroy those trees. They're kind of in the way. Okay. Fun. Okay, this feels great. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Woo! Oh! Okay, that hurt me. Uh, that's not very fair, is it? So... <laughs> I love that. That felt really fun. It exploded like aggressively though, didn't it? So what we need to do is actually bring this one up pretty high. And in fact, what I would say, yeah, pretty high, like this high. This guy, this high, this guy. And one more there. How fun. And then also, you know, why not throw in another turret? And obviously guys, we're gonna have boxes you can break on this uh, sort of wall system here. Um, we're gonna bring this one over. First off, I just wanna do this. Whoops, there we go. And he's going to, we're gonna have two actually. One here. And then one here. And we'll put some pillars so you can hide behind something uh, while you're getting to these guys here. So like a box or something here. Why wouldn't the player walk along the top edge? Because they can't. Let's see here. Yeah, they can't get up there. It's impossible. It's impossible. What is that from? No, you can't do it. That's impossible. Oh, it's Luke from... Uh, Empire Strikes Back. All right. This one here, the player will sort of have to leap. I, I am curious though, wouldn't it be really cool if they have to leap onto like a little plank, a tiny little plank? And that might be really fun. Um, and then uh, let's see here, we'll delete this one. Let's think of a puzzle. What's a puzzle we could do here? We'll, we'll think of something. I think I want to be a little bit more creative towards the end here with something strange. Okay, let's hit play. Doesn't the pimple shoot the player up so high he could reach it though? No, I don't think so, Matthew, but we'll check. It's good to always check, huh? Crap. We could check though. Whoa. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I forgot about you. We need to put some ammo crates. Let's just go ahead and put some ammo crates really quick. And also, man, the player needs a place to hide. So let's see here. We could do, yeah, 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 yeah. So what we could do is uh, uh, we have crate here, uh, wooden crate. So I'm gonna select that as a prefab and then just drag it over Bring, like this. But I wanna make sure I change the pivoting. Something's wrong with the pivoting. There we go. Okay, so we could put one here and one here. And what you do is you basically specify, you say, we're gonna have a forced drop of ammunition. Now, I was talking to Felipe today on the phone. Felipe lives in Vancouver. I'm all the way in South Carolina. And we were talking on Discord over my phone because I was driving home. Uh, and we were talking about how we might need something, what I'm gonna call emergency crates, which basically appear if the player has zero ammo. Um, but for now, I think this is fine for the demo. We're gonna do a breakable crate here and it's going to force release, always drop. It's gonna force release the pistol ammo. Let's go to our, here we go, ammo, pistol. We'll drag that in. So it's got a force release pistol ammo. This one here, no, it's gonna be random, but we're gonna do one more. Let's see, select. Yep, we're gonna do one more over here. Actually, let's do it right here. Yeah, 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 this one. Um, we're gonna do force release of the pistol ammo. <clears throat> Pistol ammo, there we go, drag it in. 
and that should give the player enough ammo if 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 the player excuse me if the player doesn't get enough ammo from this then they're just a moron and they deserve they deserve it <laughs> so let's take a look here <clears throat> thank you nj yo professor thomas father is looking great dude by the way in your last ma mastermind meeting you told me to email you is this still going on if you can't hey hector are you watching here nj emailed us can you forward me his email here uh i'm gonna i'll let me check discord really quick got a message from nj andrej your student your student just for clarity um, got a message from Andrej. Can you check the emails? Uh, okay. Anyway, so let's take a look here. Sorry about that. I, I um, usually those should be forward to me, but maybe uh, Hector missed it or something. Woo! Spiders and everything. Okay. Get out of here. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let's figure out if that ammo is dropping properly. There we go. Good, okay, ammo's dropping properly. So we are good to go. Let's go ahead and test out this platforming system one more time. Whoa, Thomas, careful. Ooh. That's just a coin. So all you gotta do is this. That's all you gotta do. So you may be able to get up there, so we'll drop that down a little bit more, okay? Let's test this. Okay, so this is where, I want there to be a moment in this puzzle, the last puzzle where the player's like, wait, what do I do? So what I like to do when I'm making games is I'll put myself in this position and think like a player and say, okay, what, what could the player do here? And I'll sort of look around and think it out. And maybe there's like a tiny little pimple down there. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really fun. Let's do it. Um, so we'll put a tiny little pimple down there. That sounds really fun. It's like, whoa, I didn't see that. Um, so this guy right here, we're going to pull down just like this. And then we'll actually bring the this platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we'll do <laughs> is we'll put this platform here, and we're going to put a ladder that goes up here. Okay. All right, so let's go to our ladders. I have a ladder right here. Broken ladder. I'm gonna paste it, and then I'm gonna move it, and then zero out of position, there we go. What is going on there? Oh, that's a broken ladder, we don't want that. Let's go to ladder. Where are we here? Let's find a prefab. <sighs> ladder short, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll paste it here. We're gonna move it over here, zero out of position, there it is. And then we're gonna make sure that the player can walk up this ladder and I think I want them to be able to walk pretty high. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah. So this ladder will take them up high and then they'll have to do one final pimple jump all the way down. All right, you guys ready to take a look at this? Let's see if it works. By the way, those of you just joining us, welcome, welcome to the stream. I just wanna let you know that my program, Full-Time Game Dev, is sponsoring today's live stream. So if you're interested in joining the program with over 3,000 students worldwide, that's a lot of students. Thank you guys so much for joining. For those of you who have joined in the chat, guys, thanks so much for joining. It really means a lot to me. Um, there are 50% off coupon codes below. There's probably only about two left. And I say that just because these usually sell out pretty quick during these live streams. I don't do this a lot. Let's kind of just pick randomly, like, hey, you know, maybe today I'll do a do a coupon for the live stream. Uh, but there are probably about two left. So if you want to join the program and learn everything I've learned in the last, well, probably about 15 years. I say decades sometimes, but it's really like 15 years of not only making indie games, 2D games, 3D games, C Sharp, all that stuff, Unity. 
not only do I teach that in the program, what makes this program super special and honestly a great investment, and I could say I could say that honestly because you can just look at the reviews. The reviews are really incredible for the program, um, and those are on the website uh, below. But I could say it's a great investment because you're going to learn the marketing tricks of not only how to hit the Steam front page, uh, which I've done, but also how to hit uh, six figures in funding before you finish your game. I know that sounds like it's too good to be true, and obviously I can't promise anything to you guys, but one of my students just raised 170 grand using my tactics on Kickstarter, which is just crazy. It's mind blowing. He was actually featured on my channel. Um, but the stuff I, I teach does work. Um, so, and I've done it myself. Okay, so there's our play. What do we want to do here? So, yeah, there's five coupon codes, or probably about two, honestly, below. So that's the grab point, okay? And you know, we could probably just lower this friend like this. Yeah. And to avoid death, watch this, this is gonna be so fun. To avoid like getting hurt, you just say, hey player, I'm gonna test your uh, your skill here. So they have to jump onto this. Like that. And then they jump onto that. Then there's the ladder right here that takes them up really high. And the way that the ladders work in my game is a little, what's the word? Terrible, but what we do is we make sure the box collider ends at the top there and also the grab point is at the bottom. Let's take a look here. So we need to move this down. This is the grab point. It's basically where the player snaps to. So they'll snap to that position. Okay, so they gotta jump down onto that. We'll move that over just a little bit and jump to here, climb the ladder, get all the way up here, and then they have to jump all the way down to a nipple bounce pad. Now we're going to change these from nipples to um, spider eggs. I know a lot of you like the nipples, but we want to make sure Okay, there's scaffolding. Where's the nipple? Son of a, okay, hold on. There's our nipple, there's our scaffold, paste, and then drag over. What on earth? Pfft. There we go. That's annoying. And then we pull it over. Where the F is the nipple? I pasted you. Oh well. So we'll pull him over here. There we go. For some reason, the nipple's pasting in the wrong spot. Okay. And we're going to put this all the way down here. But the problem with this, guys, is if the player will die. The player will die. So there's really no chance. Oh, careful. No, we're good. Okay. There's really no chance that the player can ever land on this and then jump into the water. They're going to die if they don't land on the nipple. I call them safety nipples. Okay, so that one's gonna be much lower, like down to here. It's like a dock almost. Yeah, that's about right, Harry. There we go. You got little docks down here. You can barely see it. How cool. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's take this nipple bouncer here and just pull him over here, change our pivot point. Wait, what? Whatever, um, and we'll pull it down. F all the way in. There we go. Hey! And just drag it right to about here. Okay, guys? And that should launch us all the way up here. Um, that's the theory, at least. And I love the idea. This is going to be interesting. I do kind of like the idea of requiring the player. I mean, it's, it's fun to test. Just requiring the player and seeing what we get to just land on this. This sounds like a great way to piss players off. You know? It is. I, I know right off the bat that's going to piss players off. So let's just go back in time. All right, guys, let's take a look. Ready? Hector says, what if he could run sideways on the cliff? Hector, what if you gave me $6,000 so that I could <laughs> pay someone to build that for me? 
Um, or maybe you want to build it, Hector. No, I'm kidding. Uh, get, um, there we go. Let's take a look. All right, here we go. Okay, kill you. Kill you. Don't need the boxes. Okay, there's our nipple pad. It's a leap of faith. Woo! It still hurt me. That's because the nipple pads need to reset our air time. That's why. This is fun. <laughs> okay, of course. Um, okay, so first off, let's go to our nipple jump pads and reset the air time. Now the question is, the airtime variable, where is it located? I believe it's located in our control, our player controller. So what the airtime variable does is it says, if the player's in the air for like two seconds, then you know he's gonna basically die when he's falling. Um, so let's find that really quick. Thank you, Matthew. Matthew says, game, game feel is on point. Awesome, thank you very much. Like uh, look at my butt. So let's open up Unity or not Unity. Uh, what is this called? <laughs> Visual Studio. Thomas it seems like the sidewall gives the player some grip. I know we got a lot of work to do. Um. Okay. Let's see. Airtime. Yes, there it is. Now the question is: Is this a public variable? Tisn't. Public float airtime. Then you go to your pimple bouncer, go to the script. So wait for this to load. Son of a. Thomas, have you played Will You Snail yet? I've been going at a snail's pace getting this demo done. So I haven't played it yet, but I did buy it. I did buy it. By the way, guys, Jonas Tie Rollers game, Will You Snail, was released. So be, be sure to support him. He's a great YouTuber if you don't follow him. Good friend of mine, too. What am I doing? Ah, let's go to our pimple. There we go. We have a pimple script here. And what we're going to do is on trigger enter, all we got to do is game manager dot player controller dot airtime equals zero. That's gonna reset it. On trigger exit, don't worry about that. So that should be good guys. So that means we won't hurt ourselves. That's the theory. Though, though to be honest, let's go to our actual player controller. The airtime, which is being used, yes, okay. So if player was grounded and approximately grounded is, yep, 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 yep. So all this guys needs to be, and the velocity, whatever that is. Can I do that? The velocity should be um, smaller than zero. I just don't know where velocity is being used. Let's take a look. Last velocity, controller.velocity, controller fall velocity, okay. That's some weird variable. So we can probably put that that's a that's a local variable to that script so what we need to do take this and we need to go back to where airtime is being used what we're doing here guys by the way is we need to make sure that the look just because the player is flying through the sky for two seconds so, so like if airtime is greater than 0.5 well that shouldn't hurt the player because you're flying upward and that that wouldn't hurt you and controller.velocity is greater than zero. Is it greater than or less than? Going up would be a positive value. So you'd say, and it's smaller than zero. That's the theory. Let's take a look. All right, let's hit play. So what we're looking for, guys, when we're testing this out, is we want to make sure the player doesn't get hurt when they're flying upwards. Whoa. Blah! Blah! 
Okay, good. That hurt me. All right. So that's good news. Um, is there is there a landing sound though? That's the next question because what we just did is we we wrapped all of that functionality in a condition, and we want to make sure that the conditions are being met. Good. Let's kill this mf'er. I need uh, Felipe to do a design for these pimple things, these little turrets. Should have told him to do that today. Forgot about him. <gasps> oh no! There's my ammo. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here we go. So this should good. I got hurt for some reason. Why, you mother effer? What's going on? Let's test and see if the oh, you can't even see it. It's like what's down there? We need to have the nipple just showing, right? <laughs> That's so fun. Okay, um, very cool, pretty cool. And what we can also do, I like that a lot. What we can do is, I think I want to take this and put it over here. So it's like, wait a second, where do I go? And then. Put these friends, you just stretch them down. Let's go. Come on, Harry. See? That's awesome. That's a fun little puzzle. And then one big ol' Obviously, we need to fix those other issues, which was the player was getting hurt for no reason. This, we could probably just rotate this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We don't need this. We don't need this. And we'll just pull these down, just like so. And then we're gonna take this friend and we're gonna just make a giant platform or a walkway. Walkway, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do it this way, actually. This will be really fun for the demo. I love platforming in these old school type games, so I know a lot of you probably don't. It's something I always enjoyed. Yes, no, let me know in the chat, guys. Do we like this kind of platforming in these old school games? We'll move it up so that the player isn't completely confused where to go. There we go. Kind of, sorry, it's kind of hard to see. There we go. And we'll just pop it up once. But this isn't a rigid body, guys, so it's it's not gonna like fall or anything. It's safe, we're safe. Now, I think it will be annoying if they just happen to fall through this. It's like, that's not fair. So I'm gonna take this and just move it over like that. Don't worry, don't stress. We're gonna move these up. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right, the nipple platform, we need to move up just a little bit so we can be able to see it. But remember guys, for some reason, jumping on that nipple didn't reset my airtime. And, ugh, son of a bee, let's take a look here. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, yes, that's what's wrong. So what we need to do is we need to say else, right here, else, if if the velocity, if the controller velocity gets uh, greater than zero, well, then you want the air time to be set back to zero, okay? So what's happening is as I jump down, let me show my, my camera here. As I'm jumping down, air time is increasing and if I hit like a platform, I'll die. But when I hit the pimple bouncer first, it resets the airtime to zero, boing. But the airtime conti- Let me think here. <gasps> ah, yes. We don't need that here. I just thought about it. So it really needs to be airtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Airtime will not increase unless Airtime only increases as you go down. There we go. And 
controller.velocity is smaller than zero. That's it. So air, air time will increase only if we're falling. But if we're going up, air time does not increase. That's the theory. Let's take a look. Here we go. Okay, so you can't like rage. Okay, so I thought I would be able to figure it out, but that's kind of hard, which is good. All right, I shouldn't get hurt. I just got hurt there. Let's think here. That's not good. So I got hurt just now because I hit a collider. Darn it. So what we need to do is we need to go to controller. There's a, what's the word? When I hit something, it's happened. I did this yesterday. So basically what we need to do is when we hit the ground, or any collider, we need to check and see, is it a pimple? If it's a pimple, don't hurt the player. Where did it, where does it happen though? There it is, yeah, 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 it's right there. So, yes, there we go, so it's right here. Ah, yes, and, let's see here, gravity. I need to know what I hit though. Ground, hit, dot, collider, dot, get component. If it's a bouncer, is it bouncer? No, it's pimple. <laughs> I should have called it bouncer. So if it's a pimple, if it's not a pimple, then go ahead and go for it, you know? Um, ooh, that should actually be right up here. Oh, I hate these messy uh, conditions, but... It works. That should probably be a tag, like um, like a bouncer tag. Let's take a look. Can we can we tag it into like a soft surface? That's interesting, right? Like if you had a mattress, you could tag it as soft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Let's create a new tag, and we'll call it soft surface. Good. So if we tag this as soft surface, actually, let's do the actual object itself. And we'll tag, yeah, let's see here, there it is. This is the only one we need to tag. So that, that's gonna be a soft surface. <clears throat> the theory is you could say, well, what if there was a mattress down there um, or like a trampoline or something? So you could just tag that as a soft surface. So what you do is you go grounded collider dot, what, game object dot tag equals if it does not equal soft, what was it, soft surface? Yeah, if it does not equal that, then continue moving forward with hurting the player. Watch out, Thomas. And I know you can't see my screen. Then what we would do is we would test it. <laughs> let's test it. So let's hit play here. Thomas will read the chat if you send money. No, I'll read the chat sparingly. I got a lot going on, my friends. I gotta get this demo done. Am I saying that your, you know, my time is not worth reading your chat? Is that what I'm saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. No, <laughs> okay. So this is, oh, yeah, you wanna be careful. That's, that's so funny. All right, there we go. Okay, guys, let's take a look. Good, it didn't hurt me. Yay! Okay, does this hurt me? It should. Maybe not. Let's take a look here. Okay, let's not land on the right thing. 
Good. Okay, that hurt me a lot. It should have killed me. That hurt me. And it shouldn't have. I'm so confused. <laughs> oh! Death zones. Okay, we have a death zone. So the, that's the problem. The death, the fall death trigger on exit of the fall death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what these are, these just trigger zones, and there's actually an invisible one that's right above the water, and it will force the player to die. So we need to say on trigger exit, kill on ground equals false. Uh-oh. And we don't want to set active to false. That's stupid. That should do it. Um, but it didn't kill me for some reason. Why didn't it kill me? Let's take a look. There it is. Ah, yes, because it's right there. Okay, that's. I think. I think that's fine, actually. So the player doesn't necessarily have to die when if they hit the corner of that that ledge. Skin says, if he's not reading the chat and it's not worth his time, then who's he talking to? Well, I'm talking to you guys. I mean, I listen to podcasts all day. They don't talk to me. I want you guys to watch me. I just got to get this done for, for GDC. I love having you guys hang out. Just I can't read the chat all the time. I'm trying to focus. All right, let's take a look. Here we go. Woo, that was fun. I'm just going to jump over here. I don't mind getting hurt. Hey, that's cool. Yay, it works. Okay, so there's no, I'm not getting randomly hurt. So that's fun. I don't think I can go up there, so that's good. How fun is this? I can't even see, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Can I get a round of applause? Woohoo! That's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. And then you reward the player with a bunch of coins. You know, I'm going to reward the player with a big old treasure chest right here. Let's put a treasure chest there. All right. So, you know, you cannot see the nipple. Um, and that's always a problem. You want to be able to see the nipple all the time. You just want to get just a little hint of nipple. Just always. You never know. when someone's gonna find it enticing. All right, treasure chest, let's put some treasure. So coin, variant, chest, we're gonna put a big old boy right here. There we go. Here we go! All right, guys, that will do it. That was fun, let's move this over just a little bit here. Very, very good, awesome, awesome. That was really cool. All right, so everything looks pretty good. Um, I think that's it for our live stream. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Just remember there's probably like two, maybe two of the 50% off coupon codes below. These will sell out in probably the next two or three hours. They typically do, but this is for my program, Full-Time Game Dev. I appreciate you guys listening to my sponsored ad reads for my channel because, guys, they support this channel. They support my team, Making Father, as does my game sales, but it's a good mix of both selling courses and selling copies of games. But it, more importantly, supports you guys and it supports the student, the 3,000 plus students at Full-Time Game Dev. If you're a student, let us know in the chat. Um, I love when you guys come and hang out. But we have some great reviews for the program, and that's because the program not only focuses on C-sharp, Unity, and actually developing games, but it focuses on funding, how to get funded. That's, a, that's like 50% of the course. How to raise six figures with just a demo. How to raise uh, six figures with publishers and Kickstarter with just a demo. Um, how to hit the Steam front page. How to sell your game. Like you can see here, almost a half a million dollars in gross sales from my games. So I teach you how to do this. I can't make any promises. I'm not one of those people that promises you're going to get anything. But I can tell you what I've done and how I do what I do. Um, so it's a legit course. It really does uh, work for, I can't say it works for all of my students. Can't say that, but it works for some. <laughs> like Chris down here, Chris raised, actually it says 100,000 here. 
Chris actually just raised, I think it was 170, which is insane. But he he used the uh, he used the the Kickstarter um, sort of checklist for his campaign. But anyway, guys, massive community. Um, there's a private Discord community, and you're gonna learn everything I've learned in the last decade of making indie games and doing it full time. That's the important part. I want to see you guys become a full time game developer like I do it because it's a great job. I love my job. Um, so be sure to check it out below. Um, 50% off. I don't do these sales often. I kind of randomly do it. Just randomly during a live stream, I'll do it. So if you're interested, check it out, guys. Thanks for supporting my channel. Thanks for um, continuing your indie game dream. I know a lot of you are, are pursuing indie game development. I know it's hard, and I want to encourage all of you guys um, that, yes, it is hard. Yes, it is a bit of a gamble. Um, and it doesn't always pay off. I like to be really, really honest. But there's ways, there are ways to make it easier for you guys, not as risky, make it less of a gamble. Um, and also, I just want to encourage you and say, yes, it is hard, but it is totally possible. And I've been in that boat where it was really, really hard making indie games. Like it was really hard for me. I was working a desk job. I really didn't like my job, to be honest. Um, and I just wanted to make games. So I, I scrambled, I worked hard. I worked in the mornings through lunch. Uh, worked in the evenings. It was tough. I was married. We had bills to pay. But here I am right now. There was some luck involved. There was a lot of hard work involved. And so I just want to encourage all of you guys, no matter what you do, if you want to take the program, that's fine. Or there's a free program below. It's called Easy 3D. Totally free. You can join it. No gimmicks. Um, and just learn. Hopefully I can help you out as much as I can. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. This was really, really fun. Thank you for joining me. Cheers. Where am I? What am I doing? Oh. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you, and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game. And let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up. Your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.